Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Marvel Legends The Hand Ninja Army Builder Action Figure. This comes in a paper box with the standard Army Builder red and black inked artwork down the front of the box. Onto the top of the box, we see the Marvel logo and around the sides, there's a wraparound artwork that goes all the way from the left down the front as well to the right. And over here down the sides, you will see Hasbro's message about plastic free packaging. And on to the back, there's product information in a couple of languages. The most important piece of information is that this box contains an action figure with five accessories. So let's go ahead and open the package. Out of the box, you see the accessories in a smaller paper bag and the action figure is contained in a bigger paper bag. And indeed, out of the box, we have the action figure, two kama, one sword, as well as two interchangeable relaxed hands. So that's a total of five accessories. First up, we take a look at his sword. If I hadn't said it yet, the sculpt of all the accessories and the figure is exactly the same from the hand ninja in the Stiltman Builder Figure Wave. So over here with the new sword, it is cast in a metallic looking plastic with grey paint for the hilt. And that's different from the sword that came with the previous hand ninja. This one is cast in black plastic with silver paint for the blade. I actually prefer the sword to be cast in the colour of the hilt and then have the silver paint for the blade because this way the blade would look more shiny and menacing and you wouldn't have to worry about the paint rubbing off on the hilts as you fit them onto the hands of the figure. Of course, he holds the sword just fine in his right hand. No problems with his left as well. And because he's quite well articulated at the shoulders, he can also hold the sword in both hands. And if you don't want him to hold onto the sword, you can store his sword on the sheath on his back. There's a thicker part of the blade over here that would fit snugly into that sheath. So the sword doesn't drop out after you've sheathed it. Next up, he's also got two ninja kama. These kama are once again the same sculpt from the previous hand ninja. And once again, the paint is also on the handles instead of the blade, which is cast in a metallic looking plastic. It's got the same sculpting detail, some rivets at the blade at the top, and then some sculpting down the handle for the wraps and the grips. And he can do a wield the two kama, but there's no way to store them if he's not holding onto them. And finally, he comes with two open hands. They now come in a paler shade of skin tone plastic and still articulate inwards as well as outwards. And of course, popping these hands on gives you more options with barehanded fighting styles. So onto the sculpt of the figure and now we're gonna address the elephant in the room. This time Hasbro has done him in black plastic, which is a strange choice considering the hand ninja mostly comes in red in the comics. They do occasionally turn out black, but I'd definitely rather Hasbro do them in red, just so they're more uniform with the first release of the Hand Ninja, and that they would also look more coherent as a horde of Hand Ninjas. So the color palette has been swapped from that red and dark red into a more muted black and grey. The skin tone has also changed into a pale, almost kind of zombie shade. So the hand is known to resuscitate its warriors, but I'm not sure if their skin tone is supposed to be this shade. Kinda like an undead warrior. Zooming into his head sculpt, he's still got sharp paint applications, this time with black for the eyebrows and red for the eyes. The eyes still come with no irises, and in a strange way, this red really stands out against the pale color of his skin, making him look more creepy and sinister. However, the head sculpt also suffers from the same shortcomings. The hood on the front looks unnatural because of the way it falls and sits. It actually is hovering over his shoulders and his neck. Next, the top of the hood also sits unnaturally high. Here's a Spider-Man action figure for comparison and you can see just how high that hood sits over his head. Coming to his torso, he's got a grey insert for that chest piece that goes in between his black robes. He's got a grey strap around his body, and on that strap, he's got silver paint for the buckle as well as the ninja shuriken. This time, he also has an additional hit of grey paint for the wraps around the shuriken. Coming down to his arms, once again also cast in black, with a hit of grey paint over here just above the elbow for the strap that's sculpted to look like rope. And down his forearm, he's got grey paint for the wraps. Moving on to the back, 
we see that same additional hit of grey for the strap that holds his sheath to his strap. And going down to his waist, you can see that he's got a belt that's painted in grey. Moving on to his legs, they are also similarly unpainted. They're sculpting to show the folds in the fabric as it drapes over his legs. And once you come down to his boots, they've got straps sculpted on down the sides, and they're just cast in a grey plastic. For articulation, his head is on a ball hinge, so you can spin him sideways as well as look down, but it's not much up because it's hindered by the back of his hood. He's got butterfly joints at his shoulders, so you can pull them forward quite a bit. And you can also get some good range pulling them backwards. He's also got a swivel hinge, so you can spin his arm all the way around, as well as coming out that far. There's a bicep swivel, so that goes 360. Double jointed elbows, so that's pretty good range. Swivel hinge at the wrist, so that spins 360 and articulates in as well as out. On his right wrist, he also has an up and down hinge. He's got a mid-torso ball joint, so you can turn him right as well as left. There's also some sideways tilt. That mid-torso ball joint feels a little gummy, and combining that ball joint with that hinge at his waist, you can get that much forward bend as well as quite good backward bend. He's got ball joints at the hips beneath his skirt, so you can pull his legs out that far. And you can also go forward and backward. The hip ball joints also feel a little gummy. The skirt is quite rigid, but the slit down the sides helps. He's got a swivel, so you can spin his legs outwards as well as inwards. This swivel appears quite tight. At his knees, he's got double hinge, so that's quite good range. He's got a cut just above his boot for calf swivel. He's got ankle tilt upwards that much as well as downwards and finally he's got ankle pivot outwards as well as inwards the range of articulation as well as the interchangeable hands allow you to get really expressive arm poses out of him the two kama are also great weapon options but i feel for a martial artist action figure the range of motion in his hips coupled with the really rigid plastic in that skirt and that really thick belt also hinders the movement in his waist. So I don't feel he has that same flexibility and fluidity of movement when he does his kicks. For size, he stands at about just under 6.5 inches to the top of his hood, and that's just under 16.5 centimeters. For size comparisons, here he is with Kingpin and Daredevil. He's taller than Wolverine and Psylocke. Here he is with Red Skull and Hydragoon. Spider-Man and Shang-Chi. He's definitely an improvement in sculpt, paint, and articulation from the previous Hasbro hand and chased ninjas. Here he is with Articulated Icons ninjas. With the G.I. Joe classified Arctic Mission Storm Shadow and movie Snake Eyes. And finally some Star Wars Black series. The black and grey color palette is a strange choice for the hand ninja army builder. Hasbro should have instead stuck to the original red. This figure has the same strengths and shortcomings as the original figure, so you get great arm movements, but quite limited hip range, and that's not helped by the gummy hip joints. The red piercing eyes are the best part of this figure, so if you have decided to swap your hand army into black or just want a generic black ninja, this figure is not a bad choice. But if you really need your hand army to be red, then you can skip on this one. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to my channel for more toy reviews. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.